everyone, and welcome back to another flight training video presented by AeroGuard Flight Training Center. My name is Beth, and I'm a flight instructor here at AeroGuard, and I have our guest again, Pete Redding. Welcome. Thank you. Pete Redding, he owns Vapor Global Aviation, and he is a DPE out of uh, Memphis, Tennessee, FISDO, and he comes out and does check rides for us, and he's great. And today we're going to talk about some scenario based questions and how I can turn my rope memorization, my A tomato flames, into how he's going to ask a scenario question and how I can show that I truly understand the material. All right, welcome back. So I've asked Beth, the applicant, to accomplish a flight plan, a VFR flight plan from Chandler to Yuma, Arizona. I've asked her to brief me on all the information that she's considered to include weather, um, notums, uh, takeoff and landing distances, elevations, and so she's given me a complete briefing of her flight plan. Now what we're going to do is we're going to begin the scenario with some what we call trigger questions. I'm going to ask certain questions and set up certain scenarios for Beth to kind of recall uh, information that she has learned and to demonstrate how she applies it. The biggest thing is, is that just rote memorization of information on your check ride is not good enough. The Airman Certification Standards demand that you reach the understanding level of knowledge, so you have to go from rote to application to understanding. So we need to make sure that you, you get to that level. So we've gone through the whole uh, cross-country briefing, and now I'm going to begin uh, with a trigger question. So as we go into roll here, um, so Beth, uh, we planned to take off at 9 a.m. in the morning, right. and we were going to go to Yuma, and we were going to uh, get breakfast, and I was your passenger, you're the private pilot, and you own your own airplane, which is awesome. Cool. Okay. So uh, I called you uh, at 8 p.m. last night, okay. and I said, hey, sorry to do this to you, but my day is jam-packed with stuff, so if we're going to go get breakfast in Yuma, we have to leave at 4 a.m. Oh, so we're moving from 9 a.m. takeoff to 4 a.m. takeoff. What are some things that you may need to consider now that the takeoff time has changed? Okay, so if we're leaving at 4 a.m., um, pretty sure that's before sunset. I can double check that here. And yep, sunset's at 5.33 a.m., so, or sunrise, excuse me. So I need to think about um, nighttime. Okay. So you're my passenger, right? Yep. All right, so as PIC, I need to think about night takeoff and landings and currency. So one hour before sunrise is 4.33. Okay. So I'm definitely going to be not, need to be night current to take you. Okay. Um, I am. I just did my night flights last month. Okay. So cool. That's okay. That's not a factor. Now I want to think about, um, let's say, the aircraft and equipment. Okay. So, so before we go into that, let's let's talk about um, we'll, we'll throw some more information into the scenario. Uh, so we've showed up at 4 a.m. and you've gone out to pre-flight the airplane. Okay. And of course, you went out and put on the master switch. You turned on all the lights, and as you're walking around the airplane, you realize that the landing light does not work. The landing light. Okay. So let's see if I need that for our flight. Um, so I know 91205 is a tomato flames, and that's the daytime VFR. So the nighttime VFR is going to be the FLAPS acronym, and so it's fuses, anti-collision lights, um, no alternate power source, okay. position lights, okay. And uh, yeah, and anti-collision lights. I'm saying that in the wrong order. I can't quite remember what the L is. Okay. Can I look it up? Because I don't. This is where I don't want to give Pete a wrong answer because if I say the wrong thing, that's going to be a disapproval. And I'm pretty sure, but I just want to look it up to confirm. Okay. Um, and that's a great idea. This is a great use of your uh, supporting documents. So I know it's 91205, and so I go here because I have it bookmarked and. I'm familiar with my far aim. It's not the first time I've looked at it. And so, yeah, I've got day and then night, and so landing lights. Okay. And that's only for hire, and this is my plane. So, okay. I don't So it's your plane and you're a private pilot, mm -hmm. so for hire is not in this, in this scenario. Correct. Okay, so now the question is, is now that you've done your pre-flight, you've referred to the regs, you know that there's equipment requirements, can you still legally fly, can you still legally take off at 4 a.m.? 
Well, so I don't need it, but now I have inoperative equipment. Okay. So now I need to go through that checklist. And okay. at AeroGuard, we do have a checklist for that that we can fall through. But I think I know it, and I do know the reg. Okay. So that's going to be, do we have an MEL? Okay. You, and then, um, yeah, and then I'm going to go through if it has a VFR day type certificate, okay. or I'm going to go on my POH. Okay, so we look at all that stuff, and for, for right now, nothing says you need a landing line. Okay, so I can legally fly without it, but now I need to make it inoperative. Okay. So that's the 91213, and so what I need to do is make it inoperative by pulling the circuit breaker out, okay. putting a zip tie in it. I need to placard it and say that it is inoperative. Okay. Um, it's not going to affect the weight and balance, so that's okay. Okay. Um, but then I have to make the most important decision and decide if I'm okay flying without a landing light. Okay. And that's, yeah. that's a great question. So now we're getting into personal minimums. Mm -hmm. And, and what, what would your plan of attack be if, if you had this scenario and your friend had woken up at 4 a.m. and came to meet you and you're going to go get breakfast in Yuma and the whole, the whole nine yards and now you're faced with this, this decision? What, what decision would you make? I think for me, knowing that sunrise is at 5.30 and we're meeting at 4, I think that by the time we pre-flight this airplane and we take off, that, that we're going to be getting into that civil twilight and we're going to rise up. So I think that we're going to get those the dawn hours and some, and some civil twilight. So I think I'm okay with that, knowing okay. that it's getting brighter. Okay, so you would accept the risk mm -hmm. and you would, you've mitigated it because you know when sunrise is and you know that um, you really don't need your landing light during the day. Right. So um, that's good. Um, if you decided not to go, um, what could you do? Let's say you didn't. You decided not to go at 4 a.m. What could you do? Um, and you've already kind of hinted at it about civil twilight. But what could you do if you wanted to be 100% sure that there was going to be zero risk with a landing light being out? Um, I could just ask you and say well, that's not possible. Um, okay. That's you know I'm the PIC of this flight. I'm not comfortable with that. We're going to have to wait until a little later time. Until, okay. Um, yeah, until there's civil twilight or the sun rises. Okay, the sun rises. Okay, excellent. So there you have a scenario-based um, question and answer session. Uh, and what will happen is you will probably have a scenario for um, pre-flight, maybe departure, uh, en route. And then maybe on your arrival, you'll probably have trigger questions throughout all of that um, to help you to help demonstrate that you understand and can apply the knowledge that you have uh, learned. And that's really important for the DPE to see that because that's what the ACS demands. Awesome. Great. Great job with that uh, pre-flight scenario, Beth. Thank you. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the in route scenario. Okay. So we're flying along to Yuma. We're up at 8,000 feet. Okay. Uh, it is nighttime, and we have a couple of lights on in the cockpit so we can read charts and, and see instruments. And you look over at me, and you realize, hey, you know, you know, Pete's lips are looking a little dark, darker than normal. Uh, you look at my fingertips um, because you you kind of noticing something's wrong and you see that they're turning kind of dark and I'm acting just a little slightly loopy than normal and um, what would you do with that? What, what's going on? What's happening there? Okay, so what I would be thinking is my passenger you, you probably have a hypoxia um, I'm going to think you have hypoxic hypoxia because okay. at nighttime, once you're above 5,000, you're more susceptible to that. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you how you're feeling as my passenger and try to talk to you and assess the situation, but I'm going to begin a okay. slow descent, okay. uh, checking out. So you talk to me and I kind of respond, but it's, it's just not normal. Okay. Okay. Then, I think that you have uh, yeah, hypoxia. Okay, so good. So you said you were going to descend. Um, you know, you can reference your you could reference your sectional chart this time. Uh, these are some things you can think about. Reference your sectional chart. Look at your um, your uh, minimum in route altitudes. Mm -hmm. uh, look at look at your uh, your obstruction altitudes for towers or mountains or what have you. Look for spot elevations to make sure you're not going to hit anything. So that's a, a good scenario to go down. So then what could happen is, uh, the next thing that could happen is, is let's say same scenario, we're at 8,000 feet, 
and we're flying along and it's real cold, it's middle of winter, uh, we're in Arizona, it's cold, the, the freezing level goes all the way down to the ground and um, you have the heater on and you look over at me, you see the same kind of symptoms, I'm kind of a little loopy, um, I have blue fingernails or whatever, or blue fingernails, dark colored fingernails because of the lights and my lips are blue and then you are experiencing a real painful headache right between your, your eyeballs, right between your eyebrows. Um, so now what's going on? Okay, so based off of that, I'm going to think we, since the heater's on, we have carbon monoxide poisoning. Okay. Um, that's definitely a form of hypoxia. Uh, don't want to mess around with that. It's pretty serious. So I'm going to open up the windows, um, immediately open up the air vents and try to get oxygen inside okay. the cockpit. Um, I'm also, the carbon monoxide is probably coming from the heater. Um, once I have oxygen coming in, then I'm going to close the heater so that I stop carbon monoxide coming in. Um, and then I can also confirm by looking on my CO alert, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to check the MEFs and I'm going to make sure I don't hit anything on the way down, but do a slow descent down, uh, seeing where I can land. Okay. All right. So again, real good. Um, you hit all the high points of what we're looking for as a DPE and what actions you would take. You understand the signs and the symptoms. You are able to uh, if you will, diagnose, we'll put air quotes around that because you're not a doctor, uh, what's happening with your passenger and being part of the, the most important part of being a pilot in command is taking the responsibility for your passengers and their care and protection. So you need to make sure a couple of things you could probably think of if you wanted to, you know, once you get everything under control and you're, you're heading to that, uh, that airport, you know, doesn't have a control tower. If it does, maybe tell them you're in an emergency, tell them that you need an ambulance on scene, that it is carbon monoxide. You know, relay as much information as you can. Okay. So, so taking, taking the scenario as far as possible as the pilot in command is really what you want to do and, and demonstrate, you know, what have I thought through um, in, this, in this plan. So I think excellent job on hypoxia. Awesome. Uh, I think you would be able to remain taking your exam I don't think you would be disapproved yet. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, but we'll see what happens in the next scenario. All right. Thanks, Pete. I appreciate it. All right, Pete. Thanks so much for being here. That was really helpful. Also, thanks for having me. Awesome. Any last minute tips for students on scenarios? Sure. If you ever have a question about what to expect on a pilot examination, you should never fear approaching a DPE and asking the question. They should give you a professional, uh, humble answer uh, outside of the exam uh, so that it should ease your fears or your the unknowns that you're battling uh, so you can have a successful check ride. Awesome. Thanks again for being here. We're going to have one more part in this series with Pete. Uh, so look forward to our frequently asked question video coming up. And thanks so much for liking and subscribing. Uh, you can leave some comments below. Let us know some scenarios you got on your check ride. Good luck with everything. Bye. Thanks, Pete, for coming out again and talking with us on those scenario-based questions. I hope that helps you guys. We have one more segment with Pete. He'll be out, and we're going to discuss frequently asked questions for your check ride. Thanks for watching, as always, and please like and subscribe below. See you next time.